The other thing that we know is that we really can't do much about most of the things that are stressing us. I've been doing a little survey with everyone I meet in Manchester. By the way, this is a lovely city. I thought I was coming to a, you know, like an industrial kind of grimy place. <laughs> this is knockout, the city. I mean, it's really gorgeous. Public parks and public sculpture and beautiful architecture. And so my first thought was, well, why would they be stressed, you know, with a place <laughs> like this? But um, I've been doing little surveys with some of you, and apparently there are sources of stress. And it sounds like some of it is economic uncertainty. And you're in good company there. More of the solutions. Sometimes in business, you can be at a crossroads where you're not too sure what you want to do. You've got lots of different options. And actually making the um, decision itself is the hardest thing, and choosing the path. So it starts with the sort of um, notion that all of this works from the inside out. Even the, uh, each of these crises has an internal dimension that manifests on the outside. So what we want to understand is we want to understand the innermost piece of it and work it from the inside. There's a saying that connects the um, inner world and the outer world. And the saying is, as is our awareness, so is our attitude. And as is our attitude, so is our vision. And as is our vision, so is our action. And as is our action, so is the world we create. And choosing the path. And maybe stripping back to what the core issues are and then focusing on what you actually require. So what we want to do is we want to come inside and figure out what am I doing in my mind and heart that's affecting the way I'm taking stress and experiencing that. I have a good friend who was actually in that video. Uh, her name is Dottie Janke. Have some of you met Dottie Janke? Anyone? A few of you have met her. She's 98 this year. And um, she has given me lots of good advice. And one piece last year was she said, Everything starts with the heart. The heart takes in sorrow. The heart takes in fear. The heart is where worry lives. And she said, so when we're, we're trying to deal more effectively with the world, it has to start with cleaning the heart. We have to find ways to move these things that are in the heart so that we can work in a, in a more effective way. Keep what we need in the heart, because some of it's beautiful, and then lose the rest. There were lots of things we learned about this. We learned, not, we learned to give our love and attention to other people, but not observe the sorrows from them. Once we don't observe the sorrows for them, once we have, in our heart, we have love to give, then it's good for the other people. That's what I learned. That's the main thing I learned. I, I feel that you're sad, I'm sad too. Yeah, I've used that phrase many a time. Yeah, yeah. I feel your pain, I know you're sad, I'm sad too, now look, we're both sad. <laughs> right? So what happens to them? Now you got sad, you know? This is what happens to us, the world's a wreck, and we take in the wreck in our heart, and we say, see, see how bad it is? Well, yeah, it's bad. It's bad out there, I'm telling you, it's not pretty right now, right? The world is weak. It's got lots of toxins, and we can go in many directions, and we can see how sad it is. So what's our job as good people who came out on a Tuesday night to talk about making it through the cyclone of life? What's our job? Our job is to get spiritually strong. That's our job. Otherwise, we can't help ourselves, and we certainly can't help anyone else. So to be able to keep that bit of detachment which doesn't mean not caring. In fact, you have more love to give when you are not lost in their grief. And this is true with children and spouses also. When I say to my spouse or my child or my sibling or my client, whatever, gosh, I have good wishes for you. 
I have benevolence and love for you, etc. May this go really well for you.